centuries, tucked away behind the jewel-encrusted walls of this locked crypt, lied the Shroud of Turin, an ancient piece of fabric believed by many to be the actual burial cloth of Jesus Christ. Perhaps no other cloth in history has been the subject of such scrutiny, scientific exam, debate, and reverence. When you see so many of the pilgrims who come here, or even tourists, when they look, what do you see in their eyes? It's a mystery. Yes. <laughs> no mere piece of material. The shroud bears the image of a man and continues to appear to defy science and logic for what you see and do not see. The markings that make up the haunting image of a seemingly crucified man appear on the underside of the material that touched his face and body. Inexplicably, unlike the bloodstains, the imprint was left only on surface fibers and did not go through the shroud. Historian John Maria Zucconi, curator of the Shroud Museum. How do you explain this? This cannot be explained. This is the greatest mystery of the shroud. Shroud expert and photographer Barry Schwartz. Let's face it, the shroud has become the most do documented, studied artifact in human history, and yet science cannot tell us what the image formation mechanism is. Tonight, we travel to tour in Italy in an attempt to unfold the mystery of the shroud, to find out why scientists outside the church are demanding access to the relic, to question the men of the Catholic Church in whose hands the fate of the shroud lies. Everyone would like to study it. This, as the church admits that in secret, it recently conducted a controversial restoration of the shroud. Might the cloth have been compromised? And a lot of good potential data for future research was either contaminated or lost. At the same time, questions are being asked about unofficial tests. Might the DNA of a man many believe was Jesus already have been extracted? Could it be duplicated? And what might that mean? You can't clone God. Take a good look at these photos of the Shroud, which have never before been released to American television news. They show the team of Americans, including photographer Barry Schwartz, who were allowed access in 1978 to take pictures, test, and study the Shroud. The Shroud was photographed and it revealed its characteristics of a photographic negative. In other words, the photos show an image in the reverse, and in the negative, you see what is described as a startling three-dimensional image of a man. Zaccone says these photos capture the image of ancient pollen extracted from the shroud, pollen from flowers which were grown in the region of Jerusalem and the Dead Sea, where Jesus is said to have lived. In particular, it is a plant that blooms in the month of April, which would coincide with the timing of the crucifixion. You might be wondering, how did the shroud find its way here to Turin, from where Jesus is believed to have been crucified? Scholars say it was first mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew. Centuries later, it turned up in the Mediterranean island of Cyprus. From there, it surfaced in France, where a local bishop denounced it as a fraud. It took the Italian royal family, the House of Savoy, that lived in the palace behind me, to acquire the shroud and give it safekeeping in Italy, where it's never left. The Cathedral of St. John in Turin, where the relic is now being kept, at first glance might appear rather unassuming. But inside, the pull of what draws people here is palpable, says Monsignor Giuseppe Ghiberti. Molti giornalisti. Many journalists have commented that people are seen coming out of the visit, and they ask them, what have you seen? And they say, we cannot describe it, but something has changed inside. Cardinal Severino Paletto of Turin is the papal custodian of the Shroud. 
It fills my heart with feeling, joy, but also with spiritual commitment. In a rare interview, he sat down with us and said the shroud represents a symbol of faith, but that it will take more tests to prove that indeed it is the burial cloth of Christ. We have reasons to believe that it is authentic, but we do not have conclusive evidence. A recent restoration of the shroud was conducted in secrecy by the church, leading to calls for greater transparency when tests are carried out. I wouldn't characterize my feeling as outrage, but great disappointment that the world-class scientists who are readily available to the Turin authorities were never consulted. Unlike the markings of the face and body that only appear on the underside of the shroud, blood stains on the cloth soaked through the material. Those stains are consistent with the historical details of the crucifixion of Christ. The blood was tested by the late American researcher Dr. Alan Adler, who claims tests showed unequivocally that the blood was that of a human and that it was spilled by a man who had been killed by trauma. Shroud expert Dorothy Crispino, who knew Adler well, says his tests could decipher that. The blood is uh, the, the blood of a man who suffered terribly, traumatic blood. She says open scientific access to the shroud is critical. Crispino adds she is not concerned about anyone potentially attempting to replicate or clone DNA taken from the shroud. It certainly wouldn't come out to be Jesus Christ. This hypothesis is absolutely remote. Some scientists say we must do more testing, DNA testing, this testing, scientific testing. Do you think there should be more or basta, leave alone? No, no. Science has its rights because science responds to the dignity of human intelligence. To the church, the shroud will always represent not just a test of science, but one of faith. Hard decisions will have to be made over access to the relic and whether modern technology can ultimately solve one of the oldest mysteries of all times. As custodian of the shroud, it will be up to the Catholic Church to allow such detailed testing and no one knows if it will. Michelle Gillen, CBS4 News, Turin, Italy.